Good evening and welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you out help entrepreneurs better their businesses. Tonight we have quite an exciting show lined up, but before we get to engage the conversation with the person I'm hosting today, I want to let you know each and every morning from Monday to Thursday from 7am to 7.30 we'll be doing reruns of The Business Coach. So if you missed tonight's show or rather if you watched this particular show and inspired enough, tomorrow morning wake up and to, to continue watching The Business Coach. Tonight I'll be hosting a gentleman known as John Goitoy, if I've not gotten that particular name wrong, but before I get to start the conversation, here's a brief bio of John. John Goitui is the Managing Director of Greenleaf Services, a pioneer in the waste management industry having been incorporated two decades ago. John holds a diploma in management of informational systems. John, how are you doing? Good yourself? I'm quite well. I, I always struggle with the second name. Is Nguituni or Nguitui? <laughs> okay, you only have to get it wrong once and that's it. Uh -huh. It is what? Nguitui. Nguitui? Yes. Oh, so I've tried today. <laughs> yes. All right. I can see you're still in the office late. Working. I think you're seeing you're working quite hard. <laughs> yes. And um, we are essential services, so at least it uh, allows us to the opportunity to continue offering our services. Interesting. All right. I wanted just to find out because a lot of industries have been affected. Have you guys been affected, especially in the garbage collection and waste management business? Uh, affected, uh, I would ask, in what sense? In terms of demand, in terms of, primarily just in terms of demand. All right. Yes. Um, yes. Um, there are certain aspects uh, of the business that changed. But uh, waste, as you know, uh, uh, is one of those uh, resources that have to be generated, irrespective of whether uh, the, the business environment has uh, slowed down. So technically what happened was when uh, initially um, the, the, the lockdown uh, slowed down the business within the commercial element and pushed people to work more from home, uh, what that happened is that waste now ended up being uh, concentrated within the residential uh, environment where we still offer services. So uh, what I would say is this, um, we are still working, uh, thankfully. How much of it has affected you day to day? Um, yeah, initially within the first two months of the lockdown, there, there was a, a huge uh, decrease in the commercial business uh, but uh, in the last one month uh, which has been uh, particularly evident we've seen uh, the traffic which uh, has been on the roads which directly translates to people um, moving around a bit more and probably finding themselves in those environments that are commercially driven and of course directly that means that then we are slowly getting back and we are getting phone calls from our clients uh, uh, to identify or restructure their collection schedules accordingly based on the capacity or the output of waste that they're having. Um, now we are getting them uh, asking us to re increase the frequency almost to 70% of what it used to be. And the nature of the business in terms of probably how exactly you're handling the waste, has it changed? Considering that I know right now everybody's a bit, uh, what's it called, scared, or rather taking a bit of caution in terms of how things are being handled. Definitely, Dennis. At Greenleaf Services, we are, um, of course, uh, one of the few companies that ideally uh, uh, work towards uh, being compliant with all uh, government uh, uh, regulations. And uh, of course, the Ministry of Health uh, had uh, issued guidelines on how waste uh, needs to be managed and most so in this COVID era. I would say we are fortunate because we are one of the, actually we are the only company that is currently operating as a, a mobile, garbage mobile compactor that is uh, mechanically driven whereby loading and offloading of the waste is has no human interaction. Uh, so for us, we were already compliant uh, uh, pre-COVID, let me say that for a fact, because those are systems we had tried to develop such that we can be able to, to, to benchmark ourselves with the international practices of how waste management is. So our mobile compacting truck reduces the contamination because our human uh, uh, capital or our employees or the people who are actually loading the waste 
from the, the, the producers don't have to come into contact with it when it's, it's being uh, loaded onto the truck. Similarly, as we go to disposing, there's also a mechanical system of disposing that waste out of the, of the truck. All right, and uh, you've mentioned about the compartment truck, which is quite an investment. We're going to get later into it, but I want to just uh, switch our conversation into your story and your journey, which is quite inspiring. You started off your journey, um, the garbage collection with a cut. Take me through your earlier days and how exactly you got into this business. Um, we started this business ideally uh, purely out of uh, the fact that we didn't have anything to do straight out of high school. So I began this uh, business of a journey, let me say, in 1999, that wow. I just uh, within the uh, area that uh, we grew up. So what happened was we decided to organize some uh, cleanup uh, campaign within the area. We, we, went, we used the local chief to be able to rally up uh, the residents as well. And they were happy with it. So what they did is they gave us a small token. So for that, I think the minute the token of appreciation was issued is when, um, uh, in my mind, I started developing an idea of how then can we be doing this a little bit more regularly and now develop uh, a, a, an opportunity or a livelihood around it. So, of course, because of the resources, uh, availability of the resources, uh, the easiest uh, mode of, of, of transport that we could afford back then, which we were actually not by rules to hire that Mokokoteni, uh, about 150 people per, a day. Uh, then we we'll walk around now and start collecting the waste from uh, the local community. Then we would consolidate it somewhere within the estate. Uh, then now, once it was enough to fit uh, a whole lorry, then we would hire the lorry to come and now move that garbage from where it has been consolidated onwards into the disposal. Interesting. So you started off using a cart. So how exactly was it? Because now you're 20 years into the business, at what point or rather, at what point now did you start capitalizing and making it a business and expanding? Um, of course, then you started realizing that there is a huge need for this uh, service because ideally it was, a, or it is still a mandate, a function of the local government. But because of the rapid uh, growth uh, of the city, they were not able to directly, proportionally uh, uh, avail the resources that would need to take care of the, of the waste that was being generated on a daily basis. So what happened is, of course, we started marketing ourselves uh, far away from the confines of where we were known, which then meant that then the uh, push cut or the Mokoteni stopped being a feasible or a sustainable mode of doing that business. What it did is just drove me to now um, look for my own uh, track. Yes. That then I can dedicate uh, myself and my, uh, my and my and my equipment to garbage collection. And speaking about having your own first track, you have a very interesting story as to how exactly you acquired it. Take me through it. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, within the process, I mean, again, since we were still uh, pretty small. Um, uh, I mean, we would not ideally have walked into a bank or, or we would not have the capital at that particular point in time a truck uh, on our own. But uh, there was a family friend of ours who owned uh, Bedford Truck. Bedford yeah. Trucks. The old school. Then, uh, yeah. Yeah, they were managed by, uh, I mean, they were being manufactured in England. Mm -hmm. So this uh, family friend of ours is a coffee farmer who ha had imported one back in the 70s. I think that if I went by the logbook, bought that vehicle in 19, I think it was 74 or something like that. Mm -hmm. That was before I was even born. <laughs> um, so what happened was that uh, he, he, the people who were managing it uh, misused it and he was not happy with it. He was not pleased with that. So he just decided to pack it. It had absolutely no issue. He just said one day he woke up, pulled it off the route, packed it because he used to use it to um, to carry uh, manure to go and, uh, and, and mulch on the, the coffee uh, yeah. trees. Uh. So uh, it just so happened that I realized that uh, this could be an opportunity for me. And I, and, and I asked him whether he'd be willing to sell it. He told me, yeah, young man, I don't mind. I, uh, you first go to the market and just find out how much this uh, vehicle costs. 
then you come back and tell me how much you want to pay for it. Uh-huh. So what I did is I, I went, uh, of course I knew the pricing, but I just took a week or so, went back to him. I uh, told him the value uh, of the market at that particular point in time. I think they were ranging between 270,000 uh, to 300,000. Yeah. But this is now, fast forward, this was in, um, in uh, 2003. Uh-huh. So he says, fine, you, how much would you be willing to pay for it? I told him 270,000. He said, fine, I'll tell it to you. Uh-huh. And, uh, Okay. The rest, they say, is, uh, is history. All right. On that particular note, you're going to take a short commercial break. You're going to come back. And I want to just to find out, because I know you've been in this particular business for like 20 years. You see a lot of your tracks on the road. So I want to find out how exactly has, have you started from a cut to now uh, literally servicing the biggest clientele. So we're taking a short commercial break, but we'll be back after the break. So don't touch that dial, but keep it right here on The Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their businesses.